carnivorous plants that eat animals and why they eat animals. Growing up and learning about those food chains, we've always seen that animals eat plants. But what if nature was like, let's play a reverse card. Carnivorous plants derive some or all of their nutrition from trapping and consuming animals, typically insects and arthropods. Ever wondered what the reason that caused lovey-dovey creatures like plants to turn so deadly and kill insects was? Well, these plants are not like the other plants of the plant kingdom. I'm not kidding. Just hear me out. Unlike other plants, they're grown in nutrient-deficient soil, so they eat insects to get the nutrients they need. In this video, we'll be talking about some plants who have resorted to meat-eating. The name of cobra lily is enough to describe it as a one-man army. It's found growing in bogs and stream banks. It's called cobra because of the striking resemblance of its leaves to a rearing cobra. The plant lures insects into its pitcher-shaped trap with the gift of sugar nectar on its leafy teeth. Once the poor insect enters the web, the way outside is very difficult because the pitcher is curled inwards, making the entry easy, but the exit is a path to hell. The struggling insect falls into the bottom of the pitcher, which is fluid-rich, and the bacteria there start digesting the unlucky bug. Talking about digesting, let's take a look at a plant shaped like a bladder. Just how the bladder is shaped. The bladder wart plant has characteristic small hollow sacs. Its prey traps are tiny bladders that are located on its stems. So when an oblivious organism touches hair-like triggers attached to the bladder trap door, the plant immediately sucks water with the speed of lightning and the damned organism is ready for its demise. Also a fun fact is that the bladder wart snaps shut so quickly that it's almost impossible to see it with a naked human eye. <laughs> Let's take a break from bladders and digestion. How about something more elegant? How about the star of the opera, the trumpet? The trumpet pitcher plant is found in a wide range of habitats, from sandy swamps to pine barrens and maybe even the White House because they are house plants. No pun intended. It had evolved its leaves into the shape of a pitcher to trap insects. It entices insects because it has beautiful, fragrant leaves and there are nectar drops on the leaves. The wretched insect is lured and falls inside because the footing on the pitcher's rim is quite slippery. We've talked about operas, the most sophisticated place. Oh no! But now let us move on to a plant that grows on the toughest of places, the Broschinia reducta. This resilient plant even manages to grow on the stones, showing how it needs carnivory for its nutrients. It has a water storing cup that's surrounded by tightly overlapping leaves. These leaves are coated with waxy scales, which are highly reflective of ultraviolet light. The insects are attracted to ultraviolet light, but little do they know that not everything that glitters is gold. Plus, the insects are also lured by water in a cup that has a sweet odor. The waxy scales are poor footing for insects, and they fall into the water-filled cup. Talking about the next star on our list, the water wheel plant is one of a kind. As the name indicates, it's a submerged aquatic plant, and the fascinating thing about it is that it has traps underwater. It's called a wheel because the traps are organized in the form of whorls around its stem. Around the ends of these traps are very fine teeth that interlock whenever they contact prey. Within these traps, some glands release digestive enzymes once the insect has been snapped shut, but the plant got no bait to attract its victim, so maybe hunting is just a game of luck. Okay guys, coming back to the topic, because we've got another honorable mention, the sundew. The plant has long tentacles that protrude from its leaves, and along the edges of the tentacles are nectar drops that glimmer like dew in the sunlight. Being attracted to nectar, the insect lands on the tentacles and gets stuck because the plant produces an adhesive that won't let the insect go. The tentacles surround the insect and stifle it. An interesting fact about sundew is that it has a partner in crime. The assassin bugs that hide on the plants play on the captured insect, and amazingly, these bugs are safe from the plant's toxic secretions. So we just talked about moist stuff, but now's the turn of a plant which is a bit desiccated, the dewy pine. 
Unlike other carnivorous plants, this plant grows in super dry xeric conditions. Its leaves give the appearance of sharp pine needles, which are smeared in dewdrops. The plant emits an irresistible honey-like aroma, which enchants the insects. Once it lands on the leaves, they get stuck because of sticky mucilage secreted by the leaves. And once it gets stuck, there's no going back because the more the insect struggles, the more it gets tangled. The dying insect gets suffocated and breathes its last on the leaf. The glands located along the leaves release enzymes that digest the insect, and this insect liquid dribbles down the leaves and gets absorbed by the plant. Probably thinking how all these carnivorous plants got the same sounding names, but not the next one because it has such an amusing name, moccasin plant. This plant has quite a funny second name and that's pink lady slipper. It's so called because it has a short underground stem, it grows in a wide variety of habitats from deciduous woods to mountaintops. It lures insects by sweet nectar into its moccasin shaped pitchers where the unfortunate insect dies a slow death. To further distract the insect, the plant has translucent cells which cause the insect to knock itself silly while having an unsuccessful escape. Let us move to another plant with a compelling backstory to its name, the Tropical Pitcher. Amusing how this is such a deadly plant, but got such a cute nickname, Monkey Cups, because occasionally monkeys drink water from the fluid in its pitcher. When it comes to the king of carnivorous plants, the Tropical Pitcher holds the crown. Its pitcher swelling in mid-vein of the lead is so huge it can hold three quarts of liquid and devour lizards and even small rodents. Its pitcher serves as traps, and the organisms are attracted by nectar secreted from the underside of pitches. So the doomed organism falls from the mouth of the pitcher into the pool of liquid at the bottom. Mosquitoes, like this one here, there's a whole heap of, of mosquitoes in there oh, now. Yeah. Um, the organism's escape is made grueling by the downward pointing hairs. The drowned organism is eventually digested by the enzyme. And now comes the real smasher of the list, the Venus flytrap. You must have heard the name of this plant before. These plants even enthralled Charles Darwin as he called them one of the most wonderful in the world. But sadly, this plant is slowly going extinct. It captures the attention of insects by the reddish margins of its leaves and by secreting sweet nectar. The leaves edges have teeth and when the leaves snap shut, they form a trap. But the amazing thing about this plant is that if a fly lands on a fly trap, it doesn't clamp right away. <laughs> The plant is quite intelligent. Let me explain to you. There's a sensory hair that counts movements from the insect. There must be at least two movements in 20 seconds or the trap will not close. This saves the plant from trapping dirt or other things which will not be nutritious. Pretty intriguing, right? And these two movements are the last safe movements for the insect because at the third movement, the plant starts secreting digestive fluids. Alas, the insect becomes a meal for the plant. So guys, that's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do share your thoughts in the comments section and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on our future content. Goodbye till the next video.